Okay, our next game is Gekibo Gekisha Boy for the PC Engine. It was nominated by two people, 90s Gaming Obscurities on iTunes, who gave us a five-star review, which means we had to fast-track this one. Um, we didn't just put it at the end of the list. We put it at the beginning of the list. It was also named by at underscore uh, Withag on Twitter. Uh, it was developed by Who Knows, and it was published by Irem, as I said, for the PC Engine, and it was... Uh, earliest release date was who knows i didn't oh it, we on. found out we were doing a little bit of uh pre research it's done by a company called tomcat system so we just had to go through its wikipedia page to see what else they did and as it turns out it's not much interesting it's like they did the super famicom ports of sim earth and sim ant uh they did some of the itadeki street games and a bunch of those uh cheap ass uh simple 1500 games uh, where we would be without those. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still around, apparently. Their website, but it's all like mobile mobile junk. The, the well, fate I of mean, every shadow developer. <laughs> look, I mean, there, there are people out there making money by uh, coding games. So They're doing yeah, a lot more than I Whatever. would. I want to insult them. Yeah, more but, but you did. And anyway, but... Uh, so, so, this is a very weird game. It's kind of like a proto-Pokemon Snap. Yeah, in that it, it is a scrolling uh, game where you an auto scrolling game where I think it's it's all on uh, one plane and you play a like vaguely pervy looking photographer. Uh, I have like a assignment. caricature of like what a photographer looks like because they're kind of like always uh, looking around. Like the whole game is full of caricatures. Uh, as apparently, we'll find. his name, the character's name, is David Goldman. Although I don't know if that was just added to the <laughs> official translation <laughs> or uh, if that was the original case. And the thing of it is, it his, is his parents apparently died in a plane crash, and he got really depressed until the dean of his college encouraged him to finish his major and uh, sort of, like, uh, take out his feelings on photography, I think. So that's kind of a morbid hey, setup son, for such a you're... zany game. <laughs> is that is, that, is this right, or did somebody just make this up? I don't know. This was all in the unofficial translation. For all I know, it could be complete bullshit, but it's an interesting premise to go with. I, I, okay, uh, ex- okay, I'm reading the Japanese Wikipedia article. David Goldman is his name. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I gotta stick this into Google Translate because that's the only word I know. America Town. <laughs> yeah, they but... talk about uh, Ame Kami style, which is American comics, which is weird because I look at that art and I don't really think it's American. It looks like to I don't me even... like Japanese newspaper comics. Yeah, is yeah. it supposed to be like American comics, but they fed it through Japanese, so it's just like uh... it's just Japanese comics, but they're like it's American, but it's back to Japanese now, so it's like some weird. Maybe they're saying American because it's set in America, at least occasionally. Yeah, it's set in like the same kind of like America that like Kid Dracula is set in. No, no, okay. The the story is is actually true. Uh, David Goldman, <laughs> uh, a Los Angeles school, so and then uh, an airplane hit crash. His mom and dad dies, uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> he he wants to quit school, but the headmaster is like, "No, you must study and graduate." <laughs> an oddly oddly realistic sounding backstory it's like <laughs> son i i'm i heard what happened to your parents the, the the plane crash i'm very sorry i know you probably don't feel like going finishing your uh journalism degree right now but what i really need is a picture of a flying car <laughs> yep i think maybe the only way to end your suffering to end the pain uh, to start the healing might be to get me a picture of that freaking flying car Get out! But, get out there and get me a picture of that flying car, asshole. But, but um, if you don't don't get me a picture of that flying car. I am gonna throw you out on the street. Seriously. Yes. Well, I'm, I just I hate you. you. Don't deserve to live. Well, level, no, I mean, two, level two does literally throw you out onto the slums. So, uh, uh, well, well, I don't want to get to that just right away. Slums but. in Harlem, that's and I think that's why slums. someone uh, might have wanted us to look at this, because they wanted us to be slightly, okay. vaguely well, embarrassed. Let's just say this, there's a very unflattering character of my caricature of Michael Jackson in his smooth criminal outfit, and his lips are not safe for humanity, I'll just say that. Well, uh, I mean, so, never short of the that. art style, yeah. while we're jumping into this is basically everyone is caricatured in this grotesque fashion and that's it like everyone is gross of, yeah there's a lot of like 1940s cartoons at work here 
like American cartoons um, back when uh, which uh, Japan does kind of have a, a weird relationship with because they didn't make animated cartoons at that time um, for very obvious reasons. And uh, so they a lot of the, for example, like the, the pantomime type cartoons like Tom and Jerry are still very popular over there. Um, which is unfortunate because it, it takes a lot of very passe racial caricatures and keeps them in the mainstream in Japan in a way that they, the average person might not realize is offensive. And that's what you see a lot of in, in this game. Um, and it's, I don't want to dwell too much on it because I don't think it was a, rather, uh, deliberately uh, offensive. Yeah, but. There's a rather, um, oh, what's the word, uh, effeminate-looking flasher in the first level alone. So uh, it, it's a little uncomfortable. To there's play some, times. there's some pervy stuff going on in the game, and it's. I mean, it, it, it's a lighthearted <laughs> game. It is clearly 100 percent supposed to be lighthearted. You've yeah, got all this kooky to. stuff. Although you've got like you got. Marilyn Monroe, you've got Back to the Future, you've got loads of references to things. Although, uh, oh, let's, but, let's, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about how the game actually works. Because oh, no. the whole idea is that <laughs> you're, uh... <laughs> 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 okay, go ahead. <laughs> <talking That's> <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> So what it is 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 you like you have to you're walking automatically from the left to right and you have to take pictures of all sorts of stuff, uh, and that's how you actually get points. Like you can't just make it to the end and survive. You at the beginning of the level you're like you have to get ten thousand points, or else you'll fail. And you look at all sorts of goofy stuff. Like you can see a plane in the background, and you, sometimes something will happen to it, and other times it'll crash. So you something might crazy would happen, but it's it happens the same time every level. Like there's no randomization to it. Right. But you also have a limited amount of film, uh, which causes some issues. And also, like, right. your your camera has, like, a weird magical power that can kind of interact with the environment, too. So I mean, you can, the, like... the humor is that most of the things that happen are not good. This is like a horror movie camera. Like, you take a picture of a plane, and then it bursts into flames and crashes. <laughs> and your guy's like, sweet! <laughs> like, whatever, <laughs> there's a monkey going on in the alley. And it's like, what? You earned five new film canisters. But yeah, but. You, get, you get film canisters for taking a photos weird, of extreme the thing violence. Is like you survive levels by taking pictures of, of the worst day of these people's lives or like uh, panty shots. And then you get extra film canisters so you can survive another onslaught of bouncing glowing orbs that yeah. uh, serve no purpose. Did, did we forget to mention that you have to uh, somehow avoid a bunch of things that are flying towards well, you? Okay, There's so like knives out pots and like you can shoot them with your camera, but it ends up wasting film. It gives you a little bit of points, but not much. Uh, it's basically you're supposed to kind of because as you said, the uh, the levels are not really random. You're supposed to play them like literally like a dozen times, like mm -hmm. you know, over and over, so that you learn what obstacles you probably need to take a picture of and what ones you won't. And then once you learn how much film you're gonna get, then you start to like unravel what you're supposed to take pictures of and it is similar to pokemon snap in that way pokemon snap was a lot friendlier about it po yeah. pokemon, pokemon snap, snap with like arbitrary it. platforming to avoid these yeah, stupid things that's exactly that's that's what i was gonna say yep <laughs> um but like you do get to control your character a little bit um it does kind of get frustrating because where your camera lens is aiming you have to move that by also moving your character. It's like so a crappier situation. It, it's like where, a ball, but it doesn't work quite as well. Yeah, like you might have to like do, like some idiot throws a spear at you, and there's a like a bird trying to throw itself into you. So you're trying to dodge all of this, and at the same time, the one thing you need to take a picture of to get five extra films so that you don't lose only is, happens once. Yeah, and you're trying to like you're moving, but at the same time that you're gonna get hit, and so you're like crap. I'm just, and then you get hit, and this is the worst part. You get hit, you don't have life, you lose camera, like, um, you, you, you lose film, and you lose a lot. You lose five film for every hit that you take. Um, and I think you also slow down a little bit, and you can't take pictures for several seconds. It's incredibly frustrating, because, uh, especially in the later levels, you get hit, like, once. You're probably not going to have enough film to finish the level properly, and you're going to probably miss extra film at the same time. Oh, also, you lose power-ups. There are a couple of power-ups that you can pick up. You get um, extra speed, which is really helpful, and you get a bigger um, camera lens, which is like a weird box shape. Yeah, if you get hit, you lose those. But uh, again, it's a game that, you know, you know this kind of game because you've almost certainly played it. 
It's the game where if you're doing well, you're like, this is fun, I'm having a good time. If you screw up once, you're like, oh my god, I've I, I, you just keep losing and then that's it, you lose. Um, and if you run out of film, the level just kicks you out immediately. Game over. Uh, you have to restart the level. Um, and the guy abuses you. He gets really critical of your performance. Yeah. Like uh, the main problem that I see is that like it's it's a comedic game. Like it has all these different parodies of of different stuff in addition to like the goofy horror that's going on everywhere. But like comedy only really works once, especially when it's just shock value. So when you have to repeat the same level like a dozen times over just to see everything, like when you see a guy in the background all of a sudden tape off his mask and he's a Terminator, that's like ah, that's kind of funny. But over and over again, it just completely loses its luster. Yeah, it's less yeah, it's, funny for the fiftieth time when that damn beach ball trips you up again. <laughs> it becomes like right. amusingly rote. You're just like. All right, take a picture of that. There's people making out. Okay, there's a Terminator guy, car crash, plane crash. All right, all right, go I, ahead, I will done. say it's amusing that Irem was involved in this game, even if they didn't actually develop it. It is not unlike our type in the sense that you will be replaying certain segments many, many, many times to the point that you just have to memorize it and do good after being beaten down like a dog. Maybe not as viciously as our type, but the sort of paradigm's there. Uh, yeah, that's that's the game. It got a sequel. Yeah, Did we mention that? Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah, no. yeah. I know not a lot about the sequel except it was on the was it the PlayStation or the PlayStation Two or was PlayStation it? Two is yeah. for the sequel. Who, who would make a um, sequel to this a decade later? See, the thing is, the same company. Like, actually looks really solid. It looks like the complaints that we're making were addressed. There seems to be way more stuff going on. It seems less punishing. It seems like a much better game. And because obviously. The, the big issue, I think, with this game, and this is kind of what Crow is getting on, because it's a PC Engine game in I, 92, I think, was the year of this one, around then. Uh, at least it wasn't a shmup, right? Uh, but what happens is it, it doesn't, it can't put in enough stuff, you know? Like, you, you, the levels have to be kind of very flat and boring, and once you right, see the well, graphics, it's done. Because it's in 2D, so if, if you got Pokemon Snap, there's stuff that can be happening all over the place, and it's like, oh my god, if I just looked over there, I would have saw Charizard, and I yeah, you got like all this Charizard. Like, it's like, but I didn't see him elements. because right in this game, it's just it's like you know what you need to get, and you know when it's going to happen, and it's just like a frustrating mess of like, yeah, I got to get the the reticle up to uh, oh crap. Yeah. I mean, basically, you what do you this do again. Is, it's you have like, to take you know. a photo to make sure that the object that you're taking a photo of doesn't have like a secret gimmick that happens when you take the photo. Because when they do that, you need to shoot them to get the points. So you end up going through each level kind of wasting a bunch of film, shooting like everything, losing because you took too many photos. And then you come back to the level and you're like, okay, well, don't bother with half this stuff because it's useless. And take photo of the stuff that actually gives you points. And it's like, well, that's it's not that fun. But uh, the sequel is in has it's not in 3D. It's still side scrolling, but it's got actual depth because obviously this game can't have like visual depth, so nothing happens. Um, it's, oh, um, it's 2.5D. Oh. Uh, like I bought it. Like I meant to do an article on this like years ago, so I bought Gekish Boy 2 and played it like once. It's like if I remember correctly, it's 2.5D, but the characters yes. kind of look like Parappa ish, so they're still made of sprites. Yeah, everything's made out of sprites still. Uh, it's actually, like, it's a nice little style. Uh, it's, like, lots of cutout stuff. Um, Paper Mario-ish, too, I guess. Like, it it's, looks fun. Um, this one's also, I mean, it's it's fun enough to, like, say, okay, well, it's kind of cute and interesting. Like, it's certainly unique. Is this, like, the first yeah. game in this, like, weird genre of, like, well, camera you know, games? Kick, punch, uh, it's uh, all in the mind. <laughs> but, um... I do. I, I guess we got to rank this. And before yep. we do, I just want to say David Goldman is creeping. <laughs> um, you look at the way he walks. It's like he's he's got like the T-Rex arms and everything. Like it's I got to assume he's creepy. He's supposed to be a parody of like the paparazzi. Uh, and that's yeah. the only thing I can assume is just like that's what he is. He's just like this gross like creature that thrives of human suffering. Uh, who who uh, uh, remembers Freakazoid? A show that I personally like quite a bit because David Goldman resembles the infamous background character Emmett Nervend, whose purpose is just to stand in the background with a really creepy grin on his face in like every episode. And uh, I'm... yeah, he does seem strangely happy for someone whose parents just died in a horrible. <laughs> Maybe he caused uh... it. Maybe he's profiting off of their death. 
Oh, well, he was taking a photo. Bye, mom and dad. Click, we're... click, click. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm born a looking glass, people. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's rank this thing, and let's rank it low. Yeah, I mean, look, it's got an original idea. I'm actually happy it was uh, nominated, because I wouldn't have played it otherwise. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty... Like, this is Me neat. Too. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. So, you idea. know, just because of that, I would say, you know, it's at least above... I, I guess I have no mouth and I must scream just because I didn't hate it. Yeah, um, I think it's it was... a very novel game that is at least fairly accommodating at first. And it had an interesting premise many years before Pokemon Snap was a thing, but its frustrations really do pile up the more you look at it. And really? it's kind of flashy. Okay, the pan. so King's Quest V, Friday the 13th for Commodore 64, I would put it maybe above Last Battle, is where I would put it. That sounds pretty good. And we're done. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I would have made places a little higher, but I'm not going to contest this. It's a weird game, and I can't say a lot about but, it. So. But I do want to say thank you to uh, 90s Gaming Obscurities on iTunes, because I would not have played this game. Truly. Um, this, this is one of those games that, yeah, I, I see sometimes when I'm shopping in, in Japan, and I'm just like, I don't know what this is, and this guy looks creepy. But um, truly, this is was a 90s game obscurity. Thank <laughs> you.